So I'm up early because finally, due to the restrictions starting to ease, it means that I can go out and dive. So I'll be heading over to Stony Cove to have a splash around. Um, I'll show you around the area, show you what you can find underwater and generally just have a good time. It'd be nice to get in the water again. So I'll take you along, see what we can find. Uh, I met a perch, um, uh, uh, Pergafu vitalis uh, is the Latin name uh, of the European perch. These fish are fascinating to watch uh, and if you find uh, them in the shallows you can get them to come uh, really close up to you by uh, scratching the substrate uh, and they'll come uh, and investigate what you're doing. Uh, they have a really interesting feeding habit uh, as they are ontogenetic feeders uh, which means that they change their food uh, um, preferences throughout their growth. Uh, switching from zooplankton when they are small fry uh, to invertebrates when they're juveniles and then when they get larger they move on to fish. Uh, you may notice that there are two fish here. We have um, a small uh, young juvenile perch there. And then right in the bottom, hidden away, is a bullhead. Uh, these are small, funny little fish that remain on the bottom. Um, and they're usually found in, in lakes, streams, and, and, and fast-moving water. So as I drop down to the stern of the ship, uh, you can see the propeller there um, as, I, as I swim around. A large propeller propulsing a quite a large ship um, through the water. Uh, it's really, really cool to actually see the hull of a ship uh, um, like that. Um, there's something magical about it, but also quite eerie at times as well. Um, but as, as I further swim um, uh, along, I come across uh, another wreck. Um, this one seems to have an inhabitant uh, underneath it, and this is a pike or a northern pike. Exos Lucius. Uh, these are amazing uh, fish to uh, interact with uh, and swim alongside. Um, amazing and incredible predators. Um, this one uh, uh, is just taking a little bit of a rest um, down, uh, down a bit deeper where um, the, the water temperature kind of stays a bit uh, more stable uh, as it was still quite cold that day. Um, um, but they, they usually hung around in the shallows and uh, almost stalking uh, and ambushing uh, their prey. So again, due to the restrictions easing uh, and lockdown easing, it meant that I was able to return back to university uh, in Aberystwyth. Um, and uh, living right by the coast and needing a break from work gave me the excuse to head out for a snorkel. Um, the water was about 9 to 10 degrees, uh, and it wasn't a long before I came across something cool. Uh, so this is a common moon jellyfish. 
Oh, oh it was an absolutely awesome find. <laughs> I just love how they actually move through the water. And then I found something even more interesting as, as I carried on, and that was of an edible crab uh, that seemed to have, have uh, scavenged a dead barrel jellyfish. Um, so even though this jellyfish was dead, uh, watching the crab for a while you can see um, how, uh, how cautious it was uh, on its approach. It kept moving around and changing its approach uh, direction, just making sure that it wasn't going to uh, uh, end up uh, any differently for the crab. Um, so that was actually quite cool to, to sit there, uh, float there and, and watch that um, for a bit. I almost had to double take when I came across this barrel jellyfish, it was huge, uh, one of my favourites, um, reaching enormous size, uh, but even though they get um, really really large, um, it's actually quite amazing to watch them uh, elegantly glide through the water. Um, now unfortunately for a lot of these jellyfish, um, uh, the tide brings them into um, the rock pools, uh, and uh, due to the fact that they can only um, propulse themselves only uh, only a little bit, they are still uh, kind of at the mercy of the tides and unfortunately for a lot of these jellyfish they either become washed up on the beach or caught in rock pools um, but still nonetheless it's really really interesting to watch it um, uh, uh, pulse through the water uh, and actually seeing uh, the elegance that it has uh, as, it, as it flows uh, um, through uh, looking for, for anything to uh, to take in uh, for a meal or to, uh, uh, to, to float around. Um, and as I was on my way back, um, I came across a shoal of fish, uh, and it was it was quite hard to, to see uh, uh, what type of fish it was until I got a bit closer, uh, noticed the uh, particular head shape and also the stripes, and realised that they were juvenile mullet. So I hope you enjoyed uh, the video. Um, sorry, it was only a, a, a short one this time. Hopefully, um, as, as the weather warms and then things start to ease, it'll be easier to get out there and, and do more videos like this. We've got lots of stuff planned, which we're really, really excited about. Um, uh, but yeah, thank you for, for coming along with me uh, for this. Uh, uh, really nice to show you what's out there on the British coastline and also uh, what you can find in our lakes. But feel free to like and subscribe this video. It really, really helps us out. Uh, and hit that bell notification uh, so you don't miss out on more awesome content we have uh, coming up in the future. Um, so again, thanks for, for watching uh, Nature Scope, and uh, I'll catch you next time.